Hey everyone, it's Ivan with KitBadger.com here to bring you a little review on my favorite pistol, which is the P7 M8 by Heckler & Koch. Taking a step back in time, 72 Olympics, Munich, West Germany after that decided, hey, it's time to up our pistol game. They want to move away from a 32 ACP into something chambered in 9mm. Started soliciting pistols. What they ended up landing on was one designed by an engineer by the name of Helmut Weld. Probably mispronouncing that. But he came up with something similar to this, which was the PSP, Police Self-Loading Pistol. Started production in 79, immediately adopted by GSG-9, their counter-terror unit. And since then, there's been some modifications until it finally came to the States. There's some crazy innovative stuff going on with this P-series of pistols, one of which is the action. In their manual, it's referred to as retarded inertia bolt. Basically, inside the barrel, there's a hole that goes down into a little chamber. Chamber corresponds with this piston. What happens is when you fire around, bullet passes the little hole, chamber fills with pressure. That pressure on this piston keeps it from moving backwards. So it stays that way until the bullet leaves and then the pressure drops, at which point this piston is allowed to move backwards in that chamber till it goes through its full cycle of operation, chambering another round. Also immediately noticeable on this pistol is the barrel. It's a fixed barrel, it never moves. 4.1 inches polygonal rifling, consequently incredibly accurate. In addition to that, inside the chamber, you have 18 grooves to help with extraction. As I mentioned, there were a number of changes to the American version when it came over. Initial prototypes in 81 started production in 83. Some of those changes were the magazine release. It used to be a kind of European style heel release here. Got rid of that, went to ambidextrous magazine release right behind the trigger. You can access it from either side, really handy. And when they got rid of that, they put a little lanyard there. I don't know if anyone ever actually used the lanyard on these, but you have the option. The other thing they did is, as I mentioned that gas system, gas is ported down in here. If you put a bunch of rounds through this really fast, it'll get pretty hot. So they put this plastic heat shield in here, which does a good job kind of insulating your finger from that heat. Another unique feature is the grip angle. According to HK, when you point at something, angle your wrist about 110 degrees. Consequently, angle the grip 110 degrees so it points naturally. The other thing you'll notice is a very low bore axis. So the barrel's right here, just above my hand. The lower we can get it, the better with respect to recoil driving back into my arm. Conversely, if this thing was up here, really high bore access, when you broke around, it would want to jump a lot like that. So getting this as low as possible creates a really smooth shooting pistol with not very much recoil. One thing I haven't covered is the actual operation of this pistol. There's no external safeties on this, but this right here is the cocking lever. When you depress it, it cocks, and over here, you can see the strikers move back. At that point, you can fire the pistol. If you let go of the cocking lever, it decocks itself. Press the trigger all day long, nothing will happen. Once you've depressed that cocking lever though, strikers back, you can then fire the pistol. When it cycles, you can see the cocky, or I'm sorry, the strikers back again. As you let the trigger out, feel it reset, you can then fire it again. It'll fire like any other semi-automatic pistol at that point, with the exception of as soon as you release that cocking lever, it'll automatically go back to a safe. Conversely, squeeze it again, you're ready to fire again. It takes about 15 pounds of pressure to initially cock it, and about two pounds of pressure to keep that lever to the rear when you're gonna fire. Incredibly safe action. If there's anything not very ergonomic with this, it is the slide lock. This little piece right here gets pushed backwards when you move the slide to the rear. This enables the slide to lock back. Right here though, as we mentioned, the cocking lever, when you depress it, it sends the slide forward. Also right there is the takedown button. To depress that, slide the slide to the rear, lift up, bring it forward, slide comes off, spring comes off, and we can now perform maintenance on this pistol. 
Due to that low bore axis, grip angle, fixed barrel, as well as a really nice factory trigger, this is actually an incredibly wonderful pistol to shoot. Also, reloads, as long as you do your part, can be really fast with this pistol as well. This, in part, is because of this right here, which is our cocking lever, also doubles as our slide release. So, go into slide lock, we're back there, drop our mag, as soon as the new one comes in, rather than having to manipulate anything there, we can just squeeze, press back out, break that second shot. This pistol, P7M8, hands down, favorite pistol. Amazing to shoot. I can actually shoot it pretty well. I think it's synergy with bore access, grip angle, trigger, all that stuff. But great pistol. I carry it concealed as well, which it lends itself to. 1.1 inches thick, a little bit heavy, about 30 ounces unloaded, but still does a really good job in that capacity. As far as the magazine, eight round magazine, single stack, being the M8. They also made a M13, which was a double stack magazine, held 13 rounds. These, unfortunately, they stopped making them back in 2007. This one right here was made back in 89, still going strong. There's kind of a cult around these and consequently, hard to find. If you're gonna find one, you're gonna pay for it. Usually over a thousand bucks, even on the bottom end, and then top end, you get around 2,500, 3,000, somewhere in there. Amazing pistols though, pretty cool little piece of history as well. As always, thanks for joining us at kitbadger.com. Look forward to seeing you next time. Hey.